I was 18 when I joined. Went in in September of 66, and got out in September of 69. Well, they started sending advisors over there in the late 50s, I think. And by 64 or so, they were starting to get moving. And then in 66, they were starting to ramp up pretty good. I think six of us were sitting out in front of the school and nobody wanted to go in and register and everybody said, well, what do you want to do? And one of the guys said, well, I'm gonna go join the army. And so I think there was six of us went and joined together. They sent me back, went to Phoenix for uh, physical and stuff and my hearing was bad. So they sent me back and uh, everybody went on and I uh, went to the Army recruiter and he says, oh, you're, you want to be a mechanic? You don't have to hear anything. So they went ahead and signed me up. <laughs> Once you ever went to Vietnam, it was a whole different ball game than the rest of the stuff. I had, uh, <clears throat> One of the guys that I had originally signed up with, uh, I had went to Fort Dix, New Jersey for wheel vehicle mechanic school, Fort Benning, Georgia for uh, track mechanic school. And while I was in Fort Benning, they, uh, I'd got word that a friend of mine got shot up pretty bad over in Nam. And, so I decided that I was going you know, to, I had orders to go to Germany and I uh, told them I wanted to 1049 to uh, Vietnam. And I was in Nam two years and the first year I was with the 88th SMS Battalion and uh, I didn't even do my job. I was, uh, I wound up going into uh, communications, telephones, such as that. And that's what I did for a year there. Trans uh, and I came back to the United States and they sent me back to the same schools that I'd been to. And even the uh, instructor said, hey, you were here a year ago. And I said, yeah. They said, well, you can go outside and smoke. <laughs> and so I <laughs> didn't have to do anything there. And then sent me to Fort Seal, Oklahoma. And that's really the armpit of the world, and I think. And so I 1049 out of there to Nam, and they said that you can't do that. It was, it was disapproved by the battalion commander and uh, the post commander and then went to the Pentagon. The Pentagon says, yep, you can go back. And so when I got off the plane, I was going back the same place, same, I thought the same everything. When I got off the plane, uh, there were some people there from 4th Infantry Division and they says, oh, you have an MOS as a tank mechanic? And I says, yeah. They says, well, you're going to 4th Infantry Division. I said, no, I'm going 88. No, you're not. You're going to 80, uh, 4th Infantry. So I went to base camp, stayed two days, and then spent the next nine months out in the boondocks. Um, the first year I was there was pretty easy. It really was. We would get fired upon every once in a while, mortar rounds here and there. And uh, it wasn't nothing really bad that I thought. And so when I went to the 4th Infantry Division, that was a whole different ball game. And like I say, first year we stayed basically in camp most of the time. And the, like I say, I, 
when I went over the second time, I only had nine months left. And I spent the nine months out in the boondocks. We stayed out there. We, I don't think we went into base camp one or two days the whole time I was there. And that was just to get supplies if we did. I worked on a what's called a VTR, Vehicle Track Recovery, and uh, it weighed 56 tons, and it, uh, that's what we used to pull the engines out of the tanks and uh, other th vehicles we were working on, and a lot of times we had to go rescue tanks and just drag them back to where we could work on them. Had a little LZ or whatever that we had. Uh, let's see, about six tanks and four or five armored per personnel carriers. And I don't remember, probably 50 people. And that was about all we had there. And that's what we held the whole place with. And that's what we did. When I was sent home, sent to Fort Lewis, Washington, and uh, that was pretty much the height of all the protesters. And they told us when we got ready to, they said, don't leave in your uniform, put on your civilian clothes and just try to blend in as much as you can, short hair and all. And uh, so they were, I didn't really run into that much of a problem uh, there was a lot of people that were, had it a whole lot rougher than I did. It was one thing about Vietnam, that's why I think so much of the protest is that was the first war that was actually on the news every night. We all thought that we were doing the right thing. We were saving these people from communism and uh, you know we and really you know we that's what we did we thought we were doing the right thing and it was more of a political thing than but we thought we were doing the right thing i just don't think it's ever going to go away the what we felt when we came home and uh you know there's so many people they come up to you and say thank you for your service and I thank them and stuff. Uh, but it's just always that hurt that's always there. And I don't know whether I picked it up from being in the army or just being old or what, but uh, I get really emotional, real easy, very patri patriotic. That's one thing I've probably always wanted to do was go to Washington DC to go to the wall but I don't think I could handle it I like I say emotions are just uh, I don't think I could handle going and it would be really tough and Like I say, there was a few times that it got kind of rough, and, but we, I made it through it, thank goodness, and so a lot of people didn't, but I'm real happy that I did, so.